welcome back to Fearless Journeys Thriving on Campus. I'm Corinne, and this is my co-host, Steve. Hey, everybody. It's good to be here. Thanks, Corinne. Our topic today is really interesting. We're talking about managing relationships with roommates and looking at kind of that communication piece and conflict resolution. So with us today, we have Shaylin from Residence and Student Life. I'll let you share your title or your position within there. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself as well? Yeah, so I'm really excited to be here. I'm the Residence Life Coordinator. Um, Part of my position is helping residents thrive when they first move into residence and move away for the first time. It can be a tricky situation learning how to um, live with roommates or live away and that's where my position really comes into play. I guess a little bit more about myself. Um, Yeah, if you'd like. Yeah, I guess I am from Lethbridge and I was a student here originally before going over to the UofL and I'm excited to be able to give back to uh, our campus community. That's really awesome. Awesome. I guess in your position, you see a lot of this uh, and we were talking about this at one point, adulting just starting out, right? So we call it adulting 101 kind of thing. So yeah. you probably see a lot of that. Yeah, definitely. It's a lot of fun to to see our students when they first come in and have a lot of questions and trying to figure out how to do things for the first time themselves um, to seeing them at the end of the year, having kind of built that up and, and feeling a lot more confident as the young adults that they are. Yeah, it's really cool. Eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So moving into our first portion, as you mentioned, like some for some students, this is the first time that they are moving away from home, maybe living with people other than their family. So even if this is someone's first time or not their first time, we want to, in this episode, understand more about that roommate relationship, um, knowing that it can be really awesome, but it can also be really difficult. So we want to learn more about the impact of these relationships on mental health how to navigate these relationships, and how to manage conflict in roommate relationships. So my first question for you, Shaylin, um, why are these relationships so important? Definitely. So living with roommates, having a healthy, respectful relationship is really important. It can be both positive and negative when you have a roommate situation, and it can affect every aspect of your life. So if it is negative, it may affect your, you know, school performance. It may affect your life outside of, of the roommate situation. And so we want to encourage residents and anyone who's living with roommates to work with us to, I guess, learn some skills that can help improve their ability to room, uh, live with roommates. Yeah, you can, you can kind of see that there may be horror stories <laughs> in roommate situations, but you also make lifelong friends. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And I think that's a big key is that your roommates are, are there. They can be your support system. And, and when you have that amazing roommate support system, it really does open up the opportunity for that lifelong friendship. And it's exciting when we do have those um, roommate success stories. You know, when we're thinking about roommates, we're, we're looking at really communication is that key piece, mm-hmm. right? So we oftentimes think of, how do we communicate best? Uh, a lot of people think about active listening and and kind of boundary issues and having that open dialogue. What? How can students really navigate these waters, you know, really effectively? Mm-hmm. One of the things that we highly encourage is for any student heading into a new roommate situation is to start by just getting to know one another, um, discussing expectations, talking about, you know, it, one another's interests. But it's important to be honest with yourself, be realistic. And we really think that the best way to kind of start that is by doing what is called a quote unquote roommate agreement form. In that roommate agreement form, we encourage students to discuss things like what does the word clean mean to you? Because we know that everybody might have different um, interpretations of that word. How can you ensure that your home stays clean to that standard that maybe you both are able to agree on? Um, do you schedule those cleaning days? Who buys the cleaning products and what are you willing to share? Those types of things. Getting that out early on helps to set the roommate relationship for success. Something else that we also like encourage is students to discuss things about like, do you want to have guests at our house? Right. Are you, are you cool with having, you know, an overnight guest, a friend sleepover? Do we want to have like quiet hours in our unit? 
the more that you talk about that, the easier it is to to decide and and to set those expectations early. And then if something is, you know, breached in that agreement, it's way easier for you to deal with after the fact. So you set those agreements up for every roommate situation? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, we offer it at the beginning of the year and it helps students yeah, to guide through. Um, it also indicates whether or not maybe some roommate matches are not ideal and that's okay. <laughs> you know, just identifying maybe you're not a good fit for one another is, is totally fine because if they come to us in residence and say, hey, you know, we realize we're just really different. Is there options for us to maybe look at rooming elsewhere? We're really happy to explore those options. It's just nice that students are give each other the, the chance before they come in and say, this isn't going to work. Right. Mm-hmm. Kind of nip it in the bud kind of thing and yeah. say, you know, it's not for us. Mm-hmm. Is there a lot of flexibility for that? It depends. It really does depend. <laughs> yeah. I won't lie. But we work really hard to make everybody's residence experience as successful as possible. And if you come in and you say, hey, this just is really not going well, we want to work with you and we want to be super flexible and we want to try and find those better roommate arrangements for right. sure. And really some of that, you know, personal boundary space is big, you know, looking at, like you said, who shares things, mm-hmm. what the idea of, of, you know, we were talking earlier, what the, what's the idea of being on time, right? So I think all mm-hmm. those little pieces make a big difference. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. I, had a chance to sit down and chat with a group of um, our residents earlier in the year and something that they had decided to do was to set not specific quiet hours but specific loud hours in their unit which I thought was kind of an interesting way of looking at it they all really enjoyed listening to music while they cooked their dinner and so they would plan to do that they would have essentially a dance party sing you know cook dinner together eat a meal and then after that they'd move into kind of their quieter time that they really allowed each other to focus on, on studying and doing what they needed to do for, for their school side and their academics. Awesome. Now I'm guessing that residence life has their own specific desires and rules. And does that play a lot with those, you know, roommate agreements? Yeah. Yeah. We, We do require it for anyone who is in a um, roommate uh, shared living accommodations because we do know that without that first opportunity to communicate and get to know one another and really, really speak about some of those critical, those critical things, roommate relationships or roommate success is very likely to be a little bit poor. So we require it at the beginning of the year because we just want to set students up for as much success as possible and yeah help identify what it is to be a good roommate and and what things make you hopefully a good roommate Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's really cool I like I like that idea I think that can be really helpful for people who are in other like roommate situations not just residents like having that conversation with the person you're moving in with before you get into those things that piss you off and it's like because we didn't have that conversation we didn't know what that person wants yeah for sure how can post-secondary students handle conflict constructively risk of sounding like a broken record but quite simply just talking to one another being prepared to listen also when you're entering into those conversations if there are issues that you feel you need to address with your roommate bringing them up sooner rather than later don't let that fester talk to your roommates directly. Try not to just put it into a group chat, but actually sit down with your roommate face-to-face and have those conversations. I also think it's super important for um, residents, anyone on campus, off campus, wherever you are, considering your own impact. Like take a moment to acknowledge how your roommates might feel and how they may be impacted by your own personal actions and behaviors and reflect on those. Um, A little self-awareness piece, right? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, if things don't improve after, you know, addressing your concerns, like, that's okay. It's not always going to be perfect living as roommates, right? But sometimes it's helpful to bring in a third party. So in residence, you have the option of of bringing in resident assistants, the RAs, bringing in our office staff. We'd be happy to come in and, you know, facilitate those conversations a bit. But if you're living off campus, maybe if you have another friend, or another person who lives with you, maybe having a third party come in and help be that objective outside opinion, that can be pretty helpful. 
yeah, looking for those mutual, um, you know, solutions to any of those problems. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. And I'm trying to always think about it from the Sansa, like, you're both living here. Do you want to live elsewhere? You know, if this, if the housing situation is great, work together to make the rooming situation equally as great. Mm-hmm. Well, and sometimes like off campus, you are in those agreements and you can't just leave. You have to stick it out. So how do you do that? Exactly. Yeah. And even off campus in Lethbridge here, the rental market mm-hmm. is crazy and you can't even get into a new place yeah. usually. So it makes it quite difficult, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So finding a way to work together with your roommates is, is really important. Do you find that there's more conflict with, let's say, a unit with uh, two roommates compared to four roommates? Is is there a lot of difference? Yeah, that's a good question. I haven't specifically noticed. I wouldn't say I think there's much of a difference. It just is dependent upon the people in the roommate situation. I think it, the more that you increase numbers, there's likely higher risk of, of differing um, opinions because there's just more people, more opinions. It just depends on the individuals for sure. And my, that's at least my experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm sure you have great experience with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, like you mentioned, addressing things before they get too big, mm-hmm. having that conversation, um, trying to have that in person. I was just thinking, like, imagining myself back then. I would have had a lot of trouble, like, openly communicating with somebody. So I think... Do you think it would be appropriate to reach out and say, hey, can we have a conversation via online or texting or whatever? Yeah, 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 I definitely agree with that. Maybe at 18, I wouldn't have been prepared Mm -hmm. to have that sit down conversation. Mm -hmm. I think if you need to, going down, writing things down Mm -hmm. can be really helpful and it can express thoughts a little bit more clearly and concisely too. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to maybe before you do that, take some time, take some space before you write something down. Similar to the idea you should never write an email while mad. You should probably never um, send your roommate a text while mad. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially when you may look at it, you know, a day later and realize, oh, a single frying pan in the sink. It's probably not the thing to to phone home about and, Mm -hmm. and decide to break your lease. But simply, you know, take a day and then say, hey, I noticed this. Mm -hmm. Is there any way we can chat about it? If you're cool, I'd prefer to text about it. I think that's a perfectly reasonable way to go about it. Mm -hmm. I was thinking too, when you were mentioning writing it down, maybe someone could like reach out via text, be like, hey, can we have a conversation? But you write out your thoughts ahead of time. Because like for myself, that would have been really handy because I, in the moment when I'm panicking, can't remember anything. So even just doing something like that, like, hey, can we have a meeting and then plan out the, like, reflecting on what you're doing, what your roommate's doing, having that written out so you don't panic in the moment. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. It's kind of like the idea of an agenda for a meeting, right? Mm -hmm. Right. When there's, everything's written down that this is the topic I want to speak on, you don't have any surprises when you get there. It makes it a lot more comfortable for all parties involved because you can prepare a bit. Mm-hmm. And I think with any kind of strong emotion, we we do need that space to process, mm-hmm. right? So we, like you said, take some time and just process it before you kind of get into that conversation. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. thinking too, like the the year, the school year, like there are times when things are really stressful in classes and I imagine roommate relationships might be a little more difficult during those times. So yeah, really taking that space and time to not just react, but re- reflect and respond. Yeah. 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 Do you see that actually, so in the school cycle, uh, as we call it, the student cycle, do you see a big difference in some of the, you know, midterm and finals and more issues coming out then? Yeah, you can definitely see an ebb and flow when we have more um, roommate, you know, relationship issues that, that pop up. And yes, it does seem to correlate and correspond with when we have more academic demands on students. So around that midterm time, around finals time it can definitely indicate that, yeah, students are stressed Mm -hmm. and that stress can leak in and out of grooming situations. And so that's where it really is key to take that time and separate. Is this just me and my Mm -hmm. personal stuff right now? Or is this actually a roommate issue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it could just be yourself reacting to your stress, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... Thinking about uh, some of the student questions that they might have. Let's try this. How can you address a roommate issue without making things awkward? 
Yeah, I think similar to what we were just chatting about, but taking that day or two and, and thinking about things. And then also when you go into it, being as open as possible, you know, when you, when you are able to state, Hey, I really want to talk about this. I know this could maybe be an awkward subject. Just put it out in the open, say it as quick and as it might make you feel uncomfortable in the moment, but saying it sometimes can kind of cut that awkward. For example, like if if you're noticing somebody's personal hygiene habits are not necessarily as something that you're, you know, as comfortable with maybe. That could Um, be awkward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, And asking your roommate to maybe, hey, could you please do your laundry because it's starting to smell. Mm -hmm. That can be an awkward conversation. Yeah. But sometimes you have to be kind of cut and dry about it. You kind of have to say those words. When you kind of skirt around the question and skirt around the topic, it creates more room for that awkwardness. Right. And it can make it more difficult because if you're not clear, somebody may not know exactly what you're asking them about. And they, they may think, well, the laundry's not the problem. Maybe I just need a vacuum. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so it kind of, it may create further awkward tension within the rooming situations. Sometimes mm-hmm. just being totally upfront can help. Mm-hmm. It kind of goes back to that adulting 101, right? A lot of students may come in and not really have the skills of doing their own laundry or, or they've never done it before, right? Or they typically shower once a week kind of thing. And so that could create a lot of awkwardness there. Yeah, Mm -hmm. for sure. And just, yeah, I think recognize that also people are different. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to set aside your own opinion of what a, you know, shower schedule should be like and understand that it's okay for your roommate to maybe want to not shower every day. Mm -hmm. Some people just can't and recognize and and look and back on yourself and, and think, Maybe I also have some habits that they think are weird and try to try to find that happy middle ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's kind of um, there's a piece to it, maybe a multicultural piece as well. Right. Mm -hmm. So multiculturally, we have different values and opinions coming into a situation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I um, was speaking with some other professionals within the residence life field. And one of my colleagues from Medicine Hat College, she herself is an international student when she first came to Canada had never used a, um, a vacuum cleaner before. And she said it was quite confusing for her. And, you know, she had a few roommate tiffs because there was, you know, dirt and stuff on the carpet and roommates were getting upset. And she was really confused because she didn't really feel comfortable using that vacuum. Right. It took a little bit of understanding from her roommates to show her how to do it, to build her confidence to start vacuuming in the unit, hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, right. yeah. So going back to the conflict with roommate, you had mentioned like bringing somebody else in. Uh, I also wanted to just plunk in there, like if people need to talk to somebody to like figure out what to do, there's also wellness services. So we have a number of staff in our office who either someone could drop in to talk to our mental health support and just kind of problem solve through that, figure out what to do, how to say what's going on. Or there is counseling as an option. Like if those roommate relationships are really difficult, navigating that is really, really difficult. Potentially counseling could also be another support. Yeah, I I definitely recommend anyone to access those services Mm -hmm. for sure, especially if you feel that your roommate situation is affecting you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because ultimately we have control over ourselves, not other people. So yeah, yeah figuring true. out how to navigate that on our own or yeah. like with those supports can and even building the self reservoirs to to handle some of that stuff because mm-hmm. yeah like we've said rooming is not always a perfect linear great experience mm-hmm. and sometimes you just have to have the ability to handle a crappy situation mm-hmm. sometimes it's not perfect it's not great but it kind of has to happen sometimes mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. sometimes we just need to work through it mm-hmm. yeah So our next question for you, what can someone do if their roommate's habits are affecting their sleep? Mm -hmm. This is one that does come up fairly Mm -hmm. often in residence for us. I think, yeah, again, talking to your roommates is the best first course of action. And maybe understanding like why their, their behaviors are affecting your sleep. 
something that I had never considered was time frame, uh, time change differences. We have a few residents who, quite a few residents who are international students who call their families early in the morning and don't necessarily think that voices carry as well on the phone through through thin walls. And so sometimes we've had that affect their roommate's sleep schedule and really st- simple, simple changes can make it so that everybody in that circumstance is happy. So having um, maybe some of our students who aren't wanting to have those late night calls, they have access to the residence hall spaces 24 seven. So choosing maybe to go there, have that phone call can help alleviate that that situation for for themselves. They can still have that phone call, but their roommate can sleep through the night without being affected. Mm -hmm. And and looking at kind of those conflicts, like you mentioned, just that open communication, but maybe looking at you know, using those I statements, or I feel this, right? When this happens, I feel, I think probably is a a good key in in approaching those kinds of situations. Yeah, for sure. Especially if it is affecting sleep. That's one of those really big things that can lead to an even bigger (laughs) conflict. So starting that early and having those conversations that, hey, when you're up all night, I'm unable to sleep. And it's really affecting me. The sooner that you say that, I think the more positive the response from your roommate would, would hopefully be, right? Mm-hmm. Sun sometimes sometimes noise is just gonna happen too, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. You know? In residence, we we don't have a no party rule. We don't have a no no noise rule. We don't even have set quiet hours outside what? of exam time. No yeah, way. surprise. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> the only time we have set quiet hours is during exam time. Right. But we want, we want students to have a fun time. We want them to get together with their community and build um, those friendships and relationships. So we know that partying kind of comes with it. But we ask students to party respectfully or, or to choose to, to have a good time with their friends in a respectful manner. And sometimes that is reminding them to keep their music a little bit lower and, and talking to their roommates ahead of time. And so maybe, you know, if you know that you can't stay up super late, but your friends or your roommates have, have asked for your kind of your consent to have a party. If you agree to it, maybe planning out then, hey, I need a pair of earphones or um, earplugs. And maybe I need a white noise machine or something like that. So mm-hmm. I can kind of cut that noise down because, you know, realistically, we want students to have a, have a reasonable time and have a, have a good time in residence, but in a respectful way. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't just affect roommates because you've got, you know, row houses in a Mm -hmm. sense, right? So you've got people on your left side, people on your right side, and if you're throwing a big party, well, everybody's awake. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Um, And so it's just easier to to knock on your neighbor's door, you know, before, hey, I'm having some friends over. Do you have an exam tomorrow? Oh, you have an exam tomorrow? Well, maybe I won't actually do it tomorrow. I'll wait till, Mm -hmm. till later in the week or something like that. That's a pretty simple way to make sure that you're still able to have that party. You're still able to have a little bit of fun, but in a respectful way because you've just know recognized that your neighbor is is in a critical time in their their uh, schooling, and mm-hmm. so hey, you can you can be a good neighbor by postponing your party by a couple of days. Right, and I'm mm-hmm. sure that happens all the time. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Maybe. Well, and I was thinking that's really good in the community too. Like if you're off campus renting, mm-hmm. like talking to your neighbors, like having that rapport and that relationship so that, yeah, you can maybe postpone that party or like have that communication so that they're not calling the cops on you or whatever yeah. and you're getting in trouble. Yeah, exactly. And and sometimes post-secondary students get a bad rap mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. when they're living in community, you don't necessarily think about that because you've never necessarily had mm-hmm. to. But just taking that little extra step right. to talk to your neighbors, mm-hmm. to, to ask, oh, you know, is it okay? And, and finding out a little bit about your neighbors. Maybe they have young kids mm-hmm. who do go to sleep at 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. You probably don't want to have a big party that could, could wake them up. But just asking, because mm-hmm. I think when you ask, most people are pretty reasonable yeah yeah, yeah I, I think having that heads up like even in that situation with a neighbor with small kids maybe they could put a sound machine in their kids room so that your party isn't waking the kid up mm-hmm. um so yeah even like having that heads up you're probably gonna have a better relationship have better experience in your renting situation mm-hmm. 
Corinne, we talked about sleep before in an mm-hmm. episode, haven't we? I think so, yeah. Yeah, if, if not, we should do one on sleep, I guess. Yeah. We've mentioned it a few times. I okay. don't know. We've done one podcast specific. Oh, a whole podcast on sleep. Yeah, that would be a good one. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Shailen, so how does someone handle a situation where a roommate's really going through a tough time? They're really struggling with something, you know, but it, it's now affecting that living arrangement. You know, how do, how do we go about that? Yeah, this is a tricky situation with no perfect answer. Um, the important thing is to remember that you can support your roommates. You can, you can be there for them, but you are not responsible to, to fix the situation that they're experiencing. You're, you're not a counselor. And so with that, maybe recognize that your roommates' tough times are affecting you and the living environment and encourage them, you know, or I guess I would encourage you to discuss boundaries with them and, and try to hold firm to those boundaries. I think an example that I can really comes top of mind is if your roommate has gone through a tough breakup and is talking a lot about that breakup and maybe that makes you uncomfortable, maybe you're mutual friends with their um, former partner, then those conversations can affect the living environment. Politely asking and saying to your roommate that you're not comfortable with that conversation, that you understand and sympathize with what they're they're going through, but that you would prefer not to to go really in depth with those conversations and, and ask them to respect that. I think that's the best way to maybe start that with your roommates. But it's a tricky one because mm-hmm. it can be, as we mentioned earlier, this can be one of those really awkward conversations mm-hmm. and it's it's hard to know what to do. Um, so this is when I would recommend also reaching out to other campus supports like wellness services mm-hmm. and, and having a bit more guidance through yeah. that situation as well. Yeah, and it- by supporting your roommate, you're hopefully providing them with those supports, but also taking advantage of them yourself, mm-hmm. right? Because there is stress both ways. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, like thinking if someone's going through a major mental health thing and you're a support for that person, like you're supportive to your roommate, like you're saying, setting those boundaries because you got stuff to do too. You got schooling to do, maybe work, whatever, on top of that. So yeah, setting those boundaries, but also making sure that there's other supports for that person because you can't just be a lifeline for that person because it does take a big toll. So yeah, connecting to wellness services. If that person's not able to or willing to in that moment, you for sure can connect to those resources and supports. And even if you don't want to come to wellness services, you can reach out and get information about other supports in the community or other supports that might be helpful that fit better for you. Yeah, I'm really thinking about like for that, our, our campus care team mm-hmm. is a really, really great group for, for something like that. If mm-hmm. you're you're not sure that even recommending to your roommate to go, that they'll ac- access mm-hmm. those supports, but you're really concerned about them, sending in a care team referral because at that point, we'll hopefully reach out to them mm-hmm. and, and bridge that gap mm-hmm. and hopefully get that person the support that they, that they might need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think this is our last question for you. Could you offer some final tips and advice to our listeners who might be struggling with other roommate-related mental health issues? Yeah, so similar to what we were just saying, it's not always easy living with other people, and mental health struggles can make things even more tricky to navigate. So don't be afraid to reach out for support for yourself, for support for those around you, and Remember that it can be okay to talk to others, especially those professionals. Mm-hmm. I was thinking when you mentioned talking to others, like if you're, you can use informal support. So maybe that's other family and friends that you trust. But again, keeping like maybe the stuff that's more confidential, not sharing that, but sharing the information that they would need that would be helpful to you. Maybe those informal supports can be really helpful too. Just not like trying to avoid that gossip, trying to just get that support instead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really appreciate what you said about, you know, you're not responsible mm-hmm. for your roommate necessarily, right? You can help and be a support, but you're not responsible for what they do and their action. Yeah. And that like, that's a really big one in residence. We see, you know, damage that happens to a unit. It's hard to, to figure out sometimes who is responsible for that damage And sometimes if we don't get a clear-cut answer, everybody is billed for that damage. And that sucks to Mm -hmm. to wear that responsibility of other people. In a mental health circumstance, you don't want to wear their their baggage. That's hard for you. 
So you need to identify it early and get your supports early, recommend their supports early. So you essentially don't get billed mm -hmm. for their, their mental health struggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't want to pay with your own mental health. Yeah, basically. exactly. Right. Yeah. One more, I'm just going to throw this one more, or maybe a two part question. Can you give us an example of maybe one of those horror stories and, and then let's finish off with maybe one of those really encouraging roommate stories that was a great success. Yeah, I think like we, we've had quite a few interesting, you know, things pop up throughout the years. Some of the things I, I really think top of mind are just roommates who don't get along. <laughs> One of the ones that pops up is thermostats mm -hmm. and students who like it warmer, students who like the house cooler. And a bit of battle of will over using the thermostat. So somebody would turn the heat up and wait. the one resident would kind of wait until the other students were out of class and then turn the thermostat back down. And realistically, it's kind of a silly, mm -hmm. a silly example, but it, you know, can lead to a bigger issue. Thankfully, we were able to, you know, kind of navigate that and nip it in the bud before it became. But it's a funny one to think yeah. about because... Yeah, if you're if you're someone who prefers a cooler house, mm -hmm. living with people who prefer a warmer house can be really challenging and uncomfortable. And yeah. um, it's not something that I ever considered until working in this in this area. And it was kind of just a fun one for me to learn through the process because it did end positively. So no physical, you know, altercations. Hopefully. Oh, thank goodness, no. <laughs> <laughs> what about a great? you know, success story, another great success story. Yeah. This, this year I actually did reach out to some, some of our residents to ask them about their rooming experiences and to find out about how they, how they enjoyed um, their, their roommate relationship and, and if it, they felt it was a good fit, the ones that we were assigned to these students. And I connected with a couple of residents who share a similar name and that was how they chose to try to live together they they saw hey your name and my name are really similar we might be it might be fun to live together and yeah they've been roommates for the past couple of years and they've really bonded and think of themselves kind of now as sisters right it's and, not even a lifelong friend it's sisters even yeah yeah, yeah. and their families have somewhat integrated and know of one another and and that's really cool to me mm -hmm. that's amazing yeah, and all just because they had a similar name. Right, <laughs> that's something, just one little thing. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah, I have a colleague from a job I had a long time ago, and I know that she went here to college, mm -hmm. and I believe she's still friends, and like it's been many, many years since like both of us graduated from our programs, and she's still friends with her roommates from college, which is really cool. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's, that's the ultimate hope for mm -hmm. a lot of our residents is that they – have that really excellent relationship with their roommates mm -hmm. that yeah when they are you know 10 years past their graduation that they can you know still look back on their time here and say hey wasn't it so fun when we did this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm gonna let you have a little plug for residence life here do you want um our listeners to hear anything specifically about our lethbridge polytechnic residence life yeah, um, residence is open for applications. So if you're looking to to apply to live in residence, definitely contact our residence life office and submit the application. We have options for single bedroom units, two bedroom units, and four bedroom townhouses. Um, there's there's options for everyone, including some family units. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and maybe one day even an addiction selection. What do you think? A recovery. Yeah, a recovery right. area. A that recovery would be, house? Yeah, we have some, right. some substance-free areas, some quiet zones, some mm -hmm. gender-inclusive housing. So we kind of we cover a fairly wide range of, of services, and we hope that they apply for everyone. Well, and within residence, too, you do you plan events for the students that are living there, right? Yes, yeah. thank you. What a good <laughs> reminder. Yes, that's a huge part of my role. Mm -hmm. We offer bi-weekly events for residents that are specific to just residents. And it's a way for you to come out, engage with one another, hang out, do something fun, and they're always free. There's awesome. all Yeah, they're always free for mm -hmm. residents. There's almost always food. 
and they're a really good time. We had a few last year, we did a grocery bingo where every student who attended walked away with a bag of groceries. We did a succulent planting night, a lot of really fun things. Recently, we did our first ever outdoor movie. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. a little drive-in kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We watched Shrek, and it was such a good time. Yeah, so I heard good things about that. Oh, thank you. Um, people can follow your Instagram and yes. find out like information on things like that. Yeah, definitely follow our Instagram. It's leftpolytech.residence, mm-hmm. and yeah, we'll be posting a lot about upcoming important dates for residents, our events. Another really cool important information. Mm-hmm. You've got a great newsletter that comes out as well. Yes, mm-hmm. our um, in the loop newsletter. Mm-hmm. Um, it will be coming out monthly uh, throughout the school year, and so um, semester is starting soon. Mm-hmm. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for uh, the September issue of the in the loop newsletter. Nice. I think I said in the loop. <laughs> <laughs> sounded right to me. Oh well. In the loop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, Shaylin, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate all your insight and your um, expertise on Mm -hmm. roommates and relationships. Mm -hmm. Really great to hear. Yeah. Yeah. And just like to summarize like the stuff that we talked about, how important the roommate relationship is. And I'd like to mention like with that, those skills that you're learning in these roommate relationships will be helpful moving forward in your life, living with other people, but also like career and professionally as well, like figuring out how to manage differences how to manage conflict can be really beneficial so practicing that with our roommates can maybe be a safe space to figure out those skills Um, that effective communication investing in these relationships can have a really big impact help us in the moment in our schooling but also maybe those relationships can be supportive in our life going forward and then with all of this creating that harmonious living space can be really beneficial in school i also wanted to highlight like the pieces of residence where you're building that community we've talked in past podcasts about the importance of having fun time doing things to take care of ourselves so if you're in residence taking advantage of those if you're not finding that community elsewhere and just looking at challenges as a growth opportunity Mm -hmm. right yeah exactly so thank you all so much to our listeners for tuning into this episode Remember to share this episode with your fellow roommates or others who might benefit from it. And then also subscribe, send us comments. You can email us questions to our email. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. In your post-secondary journey, every challenge is just a stepping stone to your success. So stay fearless, communicate, and keep thriving. Mm